Um, <laughs> are we on? Uh, but we are live. We are live on the Guitar Stories podcast. Good evening, awesome. everybody. Hello, Dan. We'll do this again. <laughs> Hello, Andy. Hi, mate. It's episode uh, 36 this week, and I couldn't be more excited. Why? Why is that? My, my excitement? Yeah, why, why are you so, why are you bursting with excitement? Because we have great guests, we've got some great uh, gear news to discuss, and it's just cool to yeah, talk to you again. Yeah, and um, are you just playing Clash of Titans or something on your phone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was opening the stream to see the comments actually. And All right. I forgot I forgot to mute my my phone, so I'm very sorry. But anyways, um, hello also to everyone out there listening to the Guitar Stories podcast on your podcatchers. Um, glad to have you back, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Wow, what a professional, ladies and gentlemen! What a professional indeed. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm 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 confused slightly. I, I've been doing lots of videos and things today, so. I've jumped straight from that to a sandwich to this. And All right. You know, I needed my downtime. I only had two minutes of Peppa Pig in the middle, and that's not enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you had a sandwich as a sandwich. So in between two. I just realized I ate Peppa Pig things. as a sandwich. Oh. Oh, a cousin, maybe. Never mind. Don't, oh, well. don't, tell, you, don't tell your kids. Cousin Pig. There, they ate it with me. All right. Fair enough. So they, killed, they killed Peppa, too. My kids are brutal. Oh no! Let's see who's in the chat. We've got um, Poo Ninjas in the chat. We've got Krena. We've got John C. Michael Lerner, Valeria, our moderator, Michiel from Studio Camille, Fergie in France, uh, and probably his wife Sarah Jane S. J. Uh, Jason and something Alan M. Guitar and someone called Sixty Cycle Hum, who has spammed the chat with a load of Y's. Uh, <laughs> 60 cycle spam <laughs> <laughs> i once had a very long a, a too long conversation with ryan about spam actual spam okay. so okay. that's for another another day thank you ryan for joining right. us last week that was a wonderful long enjoyable podcast <laughs> <laughs> you know that's the thing every every single week we kind of try to get ourselves in in the mood of you know, sticking to like 90 minutes, yeah. but it never works out. It never works out. Well, we, we no. promise you tonight we're going to stick to under two hours. Yeah. 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 I don't know. But we, we're already running over. I mean, this is just the introduction. We're already talking rubbish. Yeah. I mean, we can proceed and just check out the uh, guitar news of the week. Oh, go on then. Yeah, go on. Hang on. Let's just have a look at the chat. Oh, all right. <laughs> it's full of 60 cycle hum questions well let's do the let's do the let's do the news then news with iphones yeah did you did you watch the apple keynote i did not i was um doing other things all right i mean they they announced quite a few cool things you know, featuring M1 chips and stuff. But uh, one of the most interesting things was that they also announced Apple podcast subscriptions, you know, and they kind of said it's a global marketplace and you can discover premium subscriptions uh, offered by your favorite creators. So, yeah. So I sent that to Andy and I was like, do you think we should charge people to watch that? What did you say? <laughs> show me the money show me the money <laughs> that, would, that would be pretty interesting in, in the guitar world uh, what those kind of like premium content will look like I mean we've seen we've seen um, Andertons announcing premium content on YouTube sure. we've seen uh, other YouTubers kind of have their own YouTube communities and so it'll be interesting to see how the podcast scene will develop so when it says premium and it says subscriptions, you can pay and then you get extra stuff. So kind of like a Patreon kind of thing. Is that is that correct? Yep. Yep. It's a, I mean, it's a membership. Said, I think it's a membership. I think so. Yeah. You, or I don't know if if it's working per episode because I think you have to set like an amount of of uh, money that you have to pay. I think per episode, so they right. can reach from like I think one cent to nine hundred ninety nine euros. Ching. 
How much? How much uh, would you pay for an episode of Sixty Cycle Hum? Everybody, just let me know in the chat. How much would you pay, Ryan, to not have an episode of Sixty Cycle Hum and just let Steve do it? <laughs> I like you. Got to love. You got to give give Michio credits for his comment. It's just it's just genius. It gives us a super chat and and posts. If I need to pay, I stop participating. Thanks, Michiel. That's that's thank great you, humor. Yeah, it is. great sense of humor. That's what. That's the only reason I, t I come sometimes. You know, sometimes I might not be feeling it, but I know that Michiel is going to give us two bucks and a little line. That always perks me up. <laughs> By the way, speaking of perking you up, yeah. did, did any one of you guys out there? Uh, see the nice thumbnail that andy created for this week's episode <laughs> what are you talking about what well nothing in particular except for that our guest that uh, will join us later martin miller is holding two amazing guitars in his hands and that guitar geek dude up there managed to hide both ibanez headstocks on it yeah, it was a lot of work. A lot of work. Yeah, yeah. Please, please comment if you think that was on purpose. If if he consciously did that, or if it just was an oh. accident. Whoa, Doc Andy. I suddenly got a fun time then. I, uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm my camera's slightly out of focus. I'm trying to fix it, and naturally I pressed the wrong button. So all right, all right. Yeah, so yeah. you know, you get slightly blurry. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, just as a behind the scenes. I had very limited time today, and slightly <laughs> limited motivation. And if you've ever done a thumbnail for a YouTube video where you have to cut out machine heads or tuners on a headstock, you'll know, you'll know that it's a oh, pain wow. at the bottom. <laughs> what? All right. I thought that was already done, but I could be wrong. No, it wasn't. All right. No path? Okay. So... It is what it is. Anyway, um, more news? Yeah, sure. More news. Um, the Wazacraft Tone Bender from Boss has... Some people have them in their hands, in their dirty little mitts. And some of these people have decided to put them on reverb for $3,000 <laughs> and then dropping it down to $2,000. Awesome. That's a bargain. What do we think about that in the chat? Let us know. If you didn't know, this is a very limited, I'm going to say 300 pieces, Tone Bender collaboration. We've mentioned it a few times on the podcast. I have one coming. I really hope. I'm so nervous that it's never going to turn up and I've missed the boat. But it's ordered. Um, I won't believe it till it's in my hands. <sighs> the fuzz pedal, so, you know. And, uh, yeah, people are, are trying to sell them for two grand which there's two ways of looking at this dan number one naughty naughty number two free market yep yep i mean sure. 300 pieces not a lot so i could totally see them kind of reissuing them at some point so do you think that that that's possible well they kind of come say up with... they say that it's not possible because of the parts which is why they're limited to 300 pieces so it's got a certain it's got a magic mojo part in it. And mm -hmm. this magic mojo part, uh, they chose and, and some, and they managed to come up with 300. How they got exactly 300, I have no idea. That's a lovely, yeah. round, <laughs> a lovely round number, quite fortuitous. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I think there's obviously a little bit of marketing in there. And maybe, I don't know, maybe they burned a few just to make sure that they weren't. Yeah. I, wonder, I wonder who would fall for such a marketing trick that if, if a company yeah, announces Yeah, moving on, moving on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> moving on, moving on. Um, we've still got the Discord. We have grown to over 50 people now on, on the Guitar Geek and Guitar Stories podcast Discord. Um, if anyone Great. wants to chuck the Discord link in the live chat so people can join, what that happens in there is we, we have a continuation of the chats from my premieres and from this podcast live chat so people can hang out and share stuff related to the podcast. So... If you have a gear suggestion for us or some news that we may not have seen, or you want to just share us a picture of your guitar that we'll put in the intro of the video, you can join the Discord and do that. Or if you just want to sort of say things about Dan because he doesn't participate. Oh. I do. Yeah, I've not seen you in there. I didn't have a Wi-Fi connection at home for the whole weekend. Damn you. We've got a whole channel called <laughs> the Dan channel. The Danel. 
<laughs> Post your favorite screenshots of Dan being blurry. Oh. No. Old All right, awesome. then. I want to do my pick of the week because I want to get Martin Miller on the show. Here we go. Andy's pick of the week. My pick of the week. We've got several things. Um, the first one is something from this chap here. This, oh, sorry, audio people. Brent Hines from Mastodon. Brent Hines from Mastodon is um, one of my favorite guitar players, Mastodon. I can't say they're one of my favorite bands, but every time I hear them, I think, damn, I love that guitar tone. So, yeah, I, I need to listen to more. So I, I'm not a, I am a fan, but a lazy fan in the sense that I don't go and, you know, chase it afterwards. Um, mm -hmm. And Brent Hines has released this. The Masto, the Masto drive. drive, which was, I was made aware of it actually in the Discord, you know, just to link back, um, by wow. our friend and yours, Sarang. He posted this in the New Gear stuff, and I got a Twitchy credit card. Okay. And, um, <laughs> and I got a bit excited, and then I saw this just earlier. The $249, they're made in Prague, which is about three hours from where I am right now. And they're now sold out. They made 250. And if you get a chance to look at the website, even though they're sold out, the, the copyright on that website is really funny. It's, it's one of the reasons that I bought one. <laughs> What's, what, who's the company behind those? I have no idea. Uh, maybe Saran can let us know in the chat. I don't, I, I've never even heard the pedal. <laughs> Um, you just click buy, you know. Scarcity got you on. Your Scarcity balls. got me. It it looks like a clone. It's got uh, drive, travel, volume. It's got a gain switch and a headroom switch. Mm. Um, but most importantly, it's got a really cool graphic. <laughs> yeah. What what is that? It looks like some sort of camera between a knight and a woolly mammoth. Yeah, a mastodon. A mammoth. Oh, oh, right. oh yeah. Okay, there you go. Um, so I, I, I bought a pedal for myself for my birthday, which is not yet. So I'm not going to allow myself to play it until June the 10th. Oh. I might fail there. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> leave your guesses in the comments below how long it's going to take. Until how many minutes will Andy leave, it. <laughs> leave it in the box? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the Masto Drive, it's news, but it's already sold out. It became available today. It's already gone. So if you listen to this, sorry, but um, check out my reverb page in a couple of weeks, and I'll have a tone bender from Ross and a Master Drive on there. Nice. Or, but seriously, know. like like talking like talking seriously, oh. I, I I really I really don't see a trend or I see that trend with with some sort of. Uh... Oh. I think we're still here. We went. Dan is just texting me. Um, Dream is down. Code red. Code red. Code red. Um, I don't know what's going on, everybody. I don't know why the, the chat is the stream is down. Um, Dan is messaging me. Um, uh, can you keep people happy in the chat? I, I, are we back? Are we back? Ah, oh, and we're back. Oh, Dan's not back. Uh, Dan has done something to our our thing. Hang on a minute. Well, I'm back on my own. Uh, Dan, can you hear me? I can see Dan. He's on his phone. Ah, oh, Martin's there as well. See Martin knocking around. Um, let me just see why Dan is not back. Hang on. Well, this is fun. But we'll just make sure that everybody, uh, everybody tells Martin this never happens. We're always perfectly technically capable. This is the first time we've ever had an issue. Um, this week. So, um, Dan, stop looking at your phone. Oh, he's back. Dan is back. Stop looking at your phone, Dan. <laughs> uh, 
Or is that frozen, Dan? No, Dan's moving. Dan! <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> this is fun. Dan doesn't know that he's live. It's, uh, Daniel. Gatka. Gatka, even. All right, guys. Oh! Can you still hear me? Yeah, you've been here for about two minutes. Yeah, I, I've, I was never away. It's just the point that we're still streaming and Andy is trying to fix that. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, didn't, we didn't change anything, so I really wonder what the issue is. But I assume that he's working hard on kind of getting that together ASAP, right? Um, I, I, I believe with... So let's see... Brilliant. How soon he can be back. Can you guys can you guys still uh hear, hear and see me? Yeah? Then uh Okay, Poo, you hit Can you see me too? Can you comment? You guys see me? Brilliant. Hang on, I'm going to call it. Can you This is hilarious. This is the most fun we've ever had or i've ever had it's like awesome then i'll just use that to promote shamelessly promote <laughs> <laughs> so actually we received these guitars this week no last week i'm lying last friday all right Oh, good. Awesome. I don't see Andy yet, but uh, he will probably join ASAP. I'm not hearing him yet. Yeah. Uh, let's see what happens. That's your phone, so I'm Dad. just showing you this nice guitar as soon That's as I phone. hear anything from Andy. That's your phone. Beautiful. I'm calling you right now. In Prussian blue metallic. What really strikes me about these is the attention to detail. Can you see the bridge? Hopefully you can see it. Can you see that? Just Can you see that bigger. it's polished up there? The upper part, so it looks like a mirror. And the lower part is kind of brushed. So the upper part kind of fits perfectly the mini humbucker. And the lower part perfectly fits the in-tune bridge. <laughs> I mean, that's something. Stuff like this makes me happy. <laughs> Seriously, that's too good. Apart from that. Pretty nice X. Can you see and hear me in the chat? Let me know. We're going to see some demos pretty soon. And Andy's smiling. Time and news mark. on the JB10Ms. <laughs> Not yet. They're coming, but I don't know yet. Time mark. Mark time. Yeah. Mark. I, why are we saying that? <laughs> I don't know why Dan can't hear so me. So where's Mr. Andy? I can see him, but I can't hear him. So I hope he'll join it. Join us, or do we have to change uh, the stream? Let me know, Andy. I'm just waiting for some sort of response. Well, that's your phone then. Other than that, uh, why is the camera not working nice? nicely? There, there you go. Hello, zoomy, zoomy. <laughs> they can see. Can you guys see me? What's your flipping phone? I'm blurry. Hello, AF. Dan. Answer the phone. <laughs> Answer yeah, the phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> phone. All right. Hello, Dan. Hey. Hello. Hello. They can see and hear us both. But for some reason, some you reason can't, you hear, can't me. hear me. All right. So how do we how do we deal with that? I have no idea. Have no idea. So. The matrix. Shall we just restart the stream? Is that possible? I, I believe it will be possible, yes. Let me just, right. check, Let me just that check that we're not going to lose it on, it on, um, on what's it called? YouTube. YouTube. And then we can bring Martin, bring Martin at some point. Apologies to Martin, Apologies to Martin who's Martin, probably having a great laugh great in the green room. Green room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop the stream and restart the stream, see if that fixes it. Don't go Hi, I'm now back live. I'm just going to mute Martin again because we were just having a chat about string winders. 
He's doing his uh, his housekeeping as we're uh, as we're just having internet issues. Um, Dan was having a right nightmare understanding the concept of leaving and coming back again. Hello, Dan. Um, I have to re-add you to the the thing because you now have a different link. Let's see if he comes back and let's see if he can hear me. Hello, Dan. Hey, I can hear you loud and clear. Everything's all right. Wonderful. I love the way that you stay calm, but I don't know. I don't never know. You're like you're like a swan, you know, with the legs under the water and and. Uh... <laughs> I was just shamelessly promoting the AZS line because I still so hyped. I know. I cut you off. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sucker. So, so who knows why that happened? Um, Martin is just in the green room with a string winder. That's the only information I can give you. Let's go back to um, my pick. That was the master drive. And I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go straight to Dan's pick, if that's OK, because that gives us three. Dance, pick up the week. Dance, pick up the week. There it is. Pick, pick, pick up the week. Honey, we shrunk the reverb pedals. Oh, that's good, Dan. How long did that take? No, I know that would that would have been a good headline. I know. So TC Electronics. Uh, I don't know if this is really news because I think it's a, a couple of days old already, and uh, that's like ages in our industry nowadays. So if if that if the if the Sky Surfer would have been a limited pedal, I'm pretty sure it already would have been sold out. So, but and I would have. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, um, it's just regular production, and um, the good thing is. It's smaller, so it leaves more space on the pedal board for even more pedals, for crazily expensive pedals, for clones, for boss clon mixtures kind of things. But anyways, so um, <laughs> they promote it as a premium yet affordable reverb solution. Um, I watched the demo. The demo is incredibly nice sounding. I really love that lush tone that it provides. Um, what I what I really find appealing is that they didn't cut any of the uh, the the toggles or the the switch, so you can still switch the three way between spring plate and the regular hull. And um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty cool. I, I would love to see an A B comparison if it's really like one on one same tone, but if it is, chapeau. I li really like the product. I didn't hear anything about the price point yet but um well, i think it should be also a little bit more affordable than the regular one so that's a cool thing your take i couldn't possibly comment for reasons that i cannot comment on but you can ask me, you, you can ask me questions and i can not comment all right so you i can ask you a question you are ain't gonna you ain't gonna say anything well you could ask me questions like have I got one on the way? And I could say, yes. All right. You could ask me uh, questions like, are they going to do any more mini pedals? And I could say, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't possibly you... know. I don't, I can't say. <laughs> do you have an idea what the price point of this particular pedal would be? Because the, I think the original Sky Server isn't a super expensive pedal anyways, right? Uh, I can honestly answer that as I don't know. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. All right. Well, check it out. It will However, be available. I don't expect it to be any more expensive. I expect it to come in, or maybe a little bit more expensive. Hang on, because it was the Hoff Mini, wasn't there? Um, I don't know, but I can tell you soon. I, can, I mean, I can tell you more of my opinion soon. All right. So there might be a video. I don't know. I don't know, Dan. We never know. We, we never, never know. know. I don't know. OK. But, um, but it's a great cool pedal. Like, like it's, oh. it's a super cool pedal, and it's uh, it's it's uh, not expensive, so it'll be even cheaper. So that's pretty cool. I think the original one clocked in at fifty bucks, so maybe this is like thirty thirty bucks or something. I don't know. It's just in, it's it's a good price. It's it's got a good tone, so try it. Well, I have you can the, never have. I have the Mark One, the original, whatever we're calling it, the Big Daddy. Um, I've never demoed it because I didn't particularly like it that much. Um, oh, that's interesting. Okay. So. I will, I mean, maybe, maybe if I had a mini one as well, I could, I could do a, a little shootout, you know, mm. but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Uh, yeah, what's your yeah. other pick this week, Dan? 
The other pick was uh, a new range of colors from the guys at uh, Music Man. And you know that I'm a sucker for, for cool colors. And what really struck me was that particular finish that you see right there. It's called Gator Burst. So kind of Music Man unleashes the alligator, <laughs> so to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, what I really liked about it is not just the finish, also the, the way they presented it. You know, I was, I was just, we were, we were joking previously and just saying that, you know, they should pay for actually, you know, having that on, on the channel because ah, it's just gorgeous. You can spend tens of minutes just watching. Tens of looking minutes? At that nice. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, no maybe 11 minutes. No, no more. Minutes. Like, Tens, maybe 12. Now, nah, anyways, it's like regular models. They have stingrays coming in more classic colors like powder blue and burnt amber. They have the catless available in vintage tobacco too. And they have cool names for the for the saber like honeysuckle, boogie burst, deep blue burst, cobra burst, and the gator burst. And as you know, I like like green guitars, and and this is a particularly nice one. So it's yeah. not like Bre that. breathtaking news, but it's pretty cool, and I like the saber shape, anyways. So yeah. yes, yeah, I really dig in that. Um, I've never owned the Music Man. Uh... All right. I don't. I don't really have much of a relationship with Music Man, but I can say that looks like a very, very nice guitar. There's another pick of it yep. just there. Oh, there's the other colors you see. Yep, these are all other colors like honeysuckle and. I think the, the green deep, is the best. Uh, yeah, I mean that stands out. I the mean, others that's look definitely one of the colors. Sort of, um, as if they've had the saturation turned down in Photoshop. Yeah, so, uh, a bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm digging that. Yeah, I'm digging that. What do we think in the chat? Because it is almost time to buy, borrow, or burn. We only have three things this week. So um, let's find out what you think in buy. Buy, borrow, or burn. <laughs> buy, borrow, or burn. <laughs> um, <laughs> the only reason we have segments oh. in this show, by the way, is because I like making jingles. <laughs> Yeah, and actually that, that nice, like the, the image graphics look like the price is right. All right, Andy, now take a guess. How much that pedal will clock in? That's what I was going for. <laughs> Again, if you're listening to the audio version, you are missing out. Come over to the Guitar Geek YouTube channel and see that price is right graphic. It's worth it. Worth, <laughs> worth the price of entry. <laughs> so we've got oh, three well. things on offer this week. We've got yeah. the, um, the Master Drive. I've forgotten what the pedal's called that I bought. Um, the Sky <laughs> Surfer Mini, and there you go. What's it? The the Music Man was was it Gator Burst? Oh, Gator Burst. Gator Burst. So yeah. buy, borrow, or burn. It's like um the other game you play where Chag, Mary, and Avoid. Um, so you got to buy one, you got to borrow one, you got to burn one. In the chat, let us know, and then I'm hoping Dan's made a decision. I'm gonna. I quite like guessing what you're going to do dan yep all right let's let's do the guess okay the guessing I'm gonna, game. can i guess yours yeah please go ahead first i think you'll buy the ernie ball okay i think you'll borrow the mastodon drive from me and i think you'll burn the reverb <laughs> oh well spot on yeah oh get in spot on spot on yep so well, it's 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 also fairly easy for me because you already bought the mustard drive. So <laughs> <laughs> so I got, I got to change like the, the, <laughs> I changed the wording. So um, you already bought the mustard drive. You Correct. would probably borrow the skydive or sky surfer. Sky surfer. I'm sorry. <laughs> skydiver anyways uh just to try it out and maybe uh, a b it with with the older version and you would probably burn the music man saber because you already own an amazing ibanez az in trans aqua blue how is that um uh yeah go on then <laughs> gotcha yeah, I mean, I, I lost focus because people said we went all blurry in the chat and I was paying attention right. to the technical stuff. But yeah, I'll give you that. Um, we've got some interesting stuff going on in the chat. Um, forgive us tonight. There seems to be some, some technical stuff. No idea why. I can tell you that... Oh, 
two, two bits of news actually I've missed out on, Dan. Yep, I know. But I was thinking you, you like, no, consciously just avoided it. Two bits it. that you no? didn't even know about. Oh, wow. What was that? Number one, I saw the fiber optic cable getting installed at the end of my street. Big time news. A normal bro. You didn't even send me a picture. Why is that? I did take a picture. <laughs> you didn't send it. I'll send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look, lovely internet. Um, and then the second piece of news is at 8.15 tomorrow morning, I'm getting a haircut. Wow. Right before another video shoot on Thursday. Yeah, just, you know, first time in about a year and a half. But not, not too wow. much. I've instructed the, the lovely lady that does my hair. Not too much, just, you know. <laughs> just the hair tips. Yeah. Just, the, <laughs> just frost the tips, please. Yeah. <laughs> Put it I'm, in shape again. I'm forming a rock scratcher tribute band. Awesome. <laughs> oh, by the way, what, what was the band that we saw that, that had a similar image? I, I sent it to you in, on WhatsApp. Oh, what I band was it? There was a, uh, I can't remember. Oh, Amatorium? No. No, no, no. Uh, 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 decapitated. Decapitated, yes. Yeah. So the Polish band Decapitated, they had a very, very similar image to the one that you saw last week from the Rock Scratcher band. <laughs> I was like, Andy, look, that was like on Vogue at that time, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And I, I remember saying that I also have a photo of my band in a quarry, but I couldn't find it in time. That was one of the ones that, uh... <laughs> and I think that was just the nearest, like almost cool location of my house. Yeah. Anyway, let's go through the chat for bye. Borrow or burn. I, I'm yes, get this please. wrong every week. Sorry. But Rock right. Scratcher is such a hot topic that I, I can't stop talking about no. it. Um, so uh... we're going for Krena is going to buy the reverb because it's cheap. Good one. Borrow the drive pedal and burn the guitar since he wants a jazz box, not a shredder. Fair enough. <laughs> Good one. Um, do you want to do one? Yeah. Um, Mark says, dip, dip, dip. Um, Nope. Wait, wait, wait. What? I'm lost. I'm lost. So oh. Fergie said, buy the music man, borrow the masturbator <laughs> and, <laughs> and burn the TC. I think sometimes people just put like crazy comments in there because they want us to read them out to kind of use the dirty words. Yeah. yeah. I mean, masturbator is not a dirty word, but it's a terrible nickname. Yeah. <laughs> Michael says he wants to burn the guitar burst, gator burst, sorry, because it's tone wood, tone wad. I can't read. Buy the Skyverb for a YouTuber and borrow the Master <laughs> Drive just to have a rare pedal in your hands. Well, Michael, if we're ever in the same vicinity, if we have been once already, maybe I bring that with me and you can have a little hold of it. A little tickle. Um, yeah. Off the pedal. All right. Rex Effects writes, burn the green guitar, borrow the other pedal. <laughs> the other pedal. And buy the reverb. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, I wonder what Martin Miller would say to this kind of thing. Hmm. Maybe Shall we, we should, find out? Maybe we should ask him. Yeah. Should, should we bring him in? Um, yeah, please. Hang on. I'm going to bring him in right now. Martin Miller, everybody. Hello. Hello there. Hey. hey. How, are <laughs> How are you doing, guys? To, yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. Can you yeah. hear me loud and clear? Awesome. Crystal clear. Fantastic. Yeah. Is that the stereo signal? Is he pushing some highs on that microphone? <laughs> Don't troll me. Don't troll me. <laughs> <laughs> Too early in the show. All right. Um, did you take a look at the gear we were talking about just then? Do you have any opinions? Uh, so, sorry, there was a TC pedal. What was the other? Um, what was the other? Brent Hines from Mastodon Signature Overdrive. Looks like a clone. I have no idea what it sounds like, but I bought it. I like Mastodon. I, I'd probably buy that. And then there Dan had a green Ernie Ball. Music man, yep. But yeah, Martin, so Martin wouldn't probably buy that. I, I, couldn't go, I couldn't do that for political reasons. So I'll, go, I'll, <laughs> I'll buy the Mastodon pedal. Okay. Um, borrow? And borrow the TC. Burn the only ball. Very political. With a with a heavy heart. All heavy right, there heart. you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, oh, by the way, full disclosure. Before we go any further, let me say thank you to Martin 
because he is actually the one who produced the Guitar Stories podcast intro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We've we've recorded that together. I play yeah. bass on it. You play there you go. Yeah, he provides the. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 I just da, da, dropped da, da, da. that bass literally. Like when I was getting ready f to film this, I, I was already in the stream. I actually dropped the bass. <laughs> okay. Oh, horrible like, whenever that happens. It's just, like like I really drop. I mean, all right. Okay. Yeah, it, it fell off the chair. Oh shit! Shit. What kind it of dropped bass right onto the is it? Up onto the the secret pedal board. Ooh. Which you know about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But nobody else. Well, no, no one's listening right now, Martin. You can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Just you, me, Dan, and 32 people at the moment. Then, <coughs> yeah. I'll I wonder. It's just, yeah. No, anyways, I mean, we can focus on that later. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Yeah, but that was great visiting Martin at his place and playing guitar and chatting. Uh, that, was that was the old. Fun, yeah. That was still the old place. So now you moved. That was here. my old place, and it was during the music park um, mesa thing in oh, Leipzig. Yeah, you're right. And we had a we had a day off. We went to my favorite Moroccan restaurant, mm -hmm. and and then recorded the jingle. And yeah. my vocal teacher is actually the guy who the 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 narrator at the end. That's <sighs> Zach Anthony, my vocal teacher. Your number one show for everything guitar. Exactly. <laughs> oh, what's, what's his name? Because I can give him a shout out. Or we should give him a shout Zach out. Zach Ensley. Zach Ensley. Zach Ensley from Georgia in the United States. Thank you, Zach. I always wanted to be called Zach <laughs> when I was a little boy. I thought Zach was the best name in the world. <laughs> with, 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 a, with a CK, with a KK, or with a CH? I didn't know it existed with a CH, so it would have been a K back. No, it was just said a K. You know, because that's even cooler. Oh yeah, Zach. yeah, like Zach McCracken. Exactly, oh, like yeah. Zach McCracken. That's the ah! <laughs> okay. I wasn't gonna we go just there. Ourselves here. Yeah, we've just outed ourselves as complete nerds. <laughs> <laughs> How good were point and click adventures? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, hello, Martina, another great Ivan's artist. She's in the chat. Show. Yeah, she's in the chat. All right. Checking I up on you. Put that mate. on my secondary screen so I can follow that. Yeah, yeah. make sure she's. Uh... I just invited my Discord guys over. I hope somebody will join. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, Martin also has a Discord. I've I've just got into Discord, so I'm you know. Yeah, it's great. It's a great I, little community. I love it. I'm I'm gonna join yours yeah. in a bit. Yeah, I'll join yours. Cool. Yeah, we'll have a. Um, Dan doesn't do anything there, so you can you can talk about Dan. Dan is actually in my Discord, I believe. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm in your too. Your... Oh, oh my god. Did I did I just ruin this? No, no, no. You didn't ruin any relationship. Dan. I mean, I'm 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 member of, of, of Martin's this... No, come on. <laughs> I'm member of, of yours and yours. That's fine, right? Yeah. It's absolutely fine. I'm just I'm just playing with you. Yeah. I'm not at all mentally scarred. <laughs> but I am searching for Martin's Discord now. Search for Martin Miller. I've just searched my own Discord. All right, I'm really brand new to it, so I'll send you a link. Don't worry about it. Oh, that'd Don't be great. Thanks, thanks very much. Yeah. Um, in fact, if someone from your Discord is here, they can share it in the chat, and then more people will join. We'll all be a, a bigger, happier family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll give the guys. Okay, I'll make sure the guys come over. Yeah. Did Did, did you guys meet before? We met at TGU18 briefly. briefly. Oh, oh, there you go. TGU18. Yeah. Briefly, but we didn't have any time to actually sit down and have a conversation or anything like. That. All right, actually, you know how these events. I, go. I've got to get this off my chest, Martin. I felt very rude towards you because I was so busy, and I just sort of went hello, and and walked past you. <laughs> was, no hard feelings whatsoever. No hard feelings. Good, because <laughs> everybody's like that on those during those events, isn't it? Yeah, I just there's a I can see that picture on the dartboard behind you with my face on it. <laughs> Tom. Tom. <laughs> This and, this joke went right over my head. Yeah, sorry, sorry. It's it's, it's the British humor that doesn't always land. <laughs> one in three. I'm, I'm going for one in three. Um, yeah, okay. I've got some uh, some questions for you. I'm sure Dan's got some guitar related questions. Of course. But because I didn't get to meet you, I've got some sort of opening questions you might ask. Um, not at a job interview or speed dating, but just you know to get to know Martin Miller. Um, All right. You've already answered the first one, which is where do you like to go when you eat out? And I guess that's that restaurant you mentioned. 
That is a very nice restaurant indeed. If you're ever in Leipzig, you should all visit Salon Casablanca. Makes okay. for a good night out. Well, the but I also like my kebab. I also, as of late, I'm really into HelloFresh. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys, if you guys have heard of that. Yep. Basically, a company that delivers you ingredients and recipes, and then you can make your girlfriend put them together for you. <laughs> <laughs> so Martina, how is it going? <laughs> no, we were really enjoying. We were really enjoying the food. I mean, our our quality of of diet has improved drastically through it, especially yeah. in these times. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Then I don't know if that's available in Austria or indeed if I would be allowed to bring that in the house, but um, I'm going to check that out because I keep hearing about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well worth it. Okay. So nice that Martin, Martin's promoting the, the good sides of HelloFresh, and I just found out that Dunkin' Donuts is delivering uh, within Bavaria. <laughs> McDonald's is, is delivering here now. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. What time span? Like 30 minutes? Or how, how did it do? Yeah, 20 minutes. They're here. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Mikhail, All right. wants, Mikhail wants to know this, how does HelloFresh work if you don't have a girlfriend? <laughs> I think I think it won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I mean it's it's actually idiot proof, which still doesn't mean much in my case. But um, I, I I probably would turn the kitchen into a big mess and somehow end up with something edible. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank that you. sounds like a video I'd like to watch. <laughs> Cooking vlog. Cooking vlog. <laughs> kitchen fire part one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Uh, all right, um, a couple of quick fire questions, if you don't mind, Martin, just because I, I re we really don't know each other. So, coffee or quick tea? Okay. Coffee or tea? Um, tea with sparkle and cold. Okay. AKA Club Mate. That's my drink. Club Mate. Okay. So, uh, like an ice Mate, kind of thing. If, if anybody knows, the Germans will know. Mm -hmm. um, what's the Not first thing you. Drinker. Sorry, what's the first thing you notice about a person? Their hair. Okay. What is your favorite no. thing about your career? The favorite thing about my career is yeah. that I am, I'm, I'm, I'm my own boss. I'm independent. Martina? I like that. Martina, can you confirm this? <laughs> can you confirm this? <laughs> okay, two more, two more. Um, pick a number between eight and twenty-five, please, Martin. That's not the question. 21. 21. Okay. What is your favorite? What does that say about me? Um, you like numbers that are divisible by seven? Possibly, uh, yeah. What is your favorite three word sentence? Oh, that, that is not, I think, I think I'm not allowed to say, but, say that. But, uh, well, let's go with I love you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> pick, pick another number. 16. 15. 16. 16, sorry. Would you rather go camping in the woods or stay at a beach resort? Oh, beach, all the way. Okay. Agreed. <laughs> Would you pick a number for Dan, please, Martin? I'll ask you one question, <laughs> just because. Um, and please, please. Dan you... is. Dan is number one. Oh, that was the eating out question. Sorry. I have to go again. Um, <laughs> can I exceed 25? 25? 25 is the top, or I will have to come up with a question of my own. Then, then, which... then it's 25, because he's top. I'm so glad. that I was actually mentally sending you the number 25. That is so strange. It worked. It, it worked. It did. Daniel, <laughs> what is the most yes. bizarre chewing gum flavor you can come up with? Um, soccer stadium sausage. <laughs> that, that, I would immediately buy that. <laughs> wow! <laughs> you know, there are actually, chips chips are like crisp brands in Germany that offer that. Yeah, yeah. Soccer stadium sausage chewing gum. I like saying yeah. it. Fun to say. <laughs> Tongue twister. Sausage, <laughs> sausage stadium soccer. No. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> so those are my quick fire questions that weren't actually that quick and they weren't even that fiery, but I had fun reading them out. Thank you for getting to know Martin Miller. Um, I wasn't going to ask you like, like, what was your favorite Miller session? That would be rude and uncomfortable. <laughs> All right, I've got a personal one. What's it like playing with Paul Gilbert? Gilbert? How is it like playing with Paul Gilbert? Fantastic. Yeah. Um, stressful at first because just just getting getting him over this was the kind of thing that was so that was so complicated to pull off that we didn't even know it was going to happen until like three days before it actually happened. So it was initially very stressful, and then I was very intimidated, and then he called me up on 9 a.m. on the day we were going to record and asked for a, st a three-string guitar. <laughs> that was stressful. Uh, but when we finally got together and, and started playing music, it was just um, like living a, a childhood dream. And he's every bit as cool as you would imagine that he is. And he's, he's a very kind, innocent soul. It's, it's, it's a joy to be around. and and uh, soak up his positive energy. Yeah. Good to hear. That's really good. A master. And he's a master. He's an absolute master. He, he never makes a mistake. He never complains of anything. He doesn't have very high demands. He plugs in, he kills, and he leaves. Or he picks the acoustic and plays some of his favorite songs in acoustic renditions. <laughs> and yes, and uh, yeah, that's also a very, very interesting hallmark about him. Is he's, he's like the music is constantly flowing through him. So whenever he has a has an off, we have an off minute, he'll either go to the piano or grab an acoustic guitar and start singing and telling stories and entertain people around him. Yeah. But Remember without without that kind of unpleasant like egotistical sense where, where he has to be in the center of the spotlight. He's just genuinely wanting to make music all the time, it seems. Yeah. I, I really like that about somebody who has had such a, such a long and diverse career that they still get excited about something as simple as picking up an acoustic and singing a song. Mm -hmm. About really pie. <laughs> a did song read, about pie, yeah. Did you read the news <laughs> about his guitar pick um, thickness? Ah, he gave me one of his picks, and he made me change pick. So are you now using? He uses point five, or I'm it... using point six. The same pick as he does, but a point six, not a point five. And yeah, explain like what were you using before? How does it feel like to change? And would you recommend it? Okay, so I, I until 2018, I was convinced that I was never going to use any pick besides the Red Jazz Three. I was using that for my entire, entire life up to that point. And then I got really into the, the super clicky sounding um, Altex 0. Point, I want to say 0. 0.7. Let's have a look. 0. 0.73, these. Yeah. And I started really liking them for their pick attack, right there, seven focus. Yeah. And uh, that got me into using thinner picks. And I've, I've stayed with those for a while. And then, then I ran into Paul Gilbert and he handed out those picks. And I was, I, I was seriously thinking that's a joke because you can, you can blow at that thing and it'll bend over. <laughs> Bizarre. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I never even tried playing with it because I, I knew that this has got to be a joke, right? Uh, until the day, actually, you know, I, I, uh, I got, got a new wallet and took out those old picks that I got from Paul and actually started playing with it and really enjoyed it. And then I ordered every pick you can possibly imagine um, <laughs> and found out for myself that I like the Dunlop, the Wedge, 0.6. Wow. And Paul is playing the Dunlop, 0.5, the Wedge, 0.5. And these are the Wedge, 0.6. Yeah. And how does it affect the playing? Like your speed, your accuracy, the, the fluidity? I, there's something there's something about being so closely connected to the string that I really enjoy. I feel like there's less less material, less interface between me and the string. It's almost like you're 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 hitting the string with your with your body and not with with an external device. I, I just I just get a really good feel for the string, which helps my time feel. 
helps me play a little bit more in time. Did you have to adjust any any of your technique because you know your picking technique is very very sophisticated and and also you know cross picking and all those kind of things. Did you have to adjust to some degree and get used to it, or was that just there? Not not as much as you would think. I mean, right. for for if if you're going to play a super heavy rhythm guitar, it's possibly not the number one pick for that. Mm -hmm. Then I still I might still switch to this, to the Altex 0.73. And when I play jazz, I I use the Altex Jazz Three pick. Because these two picks, they just sound way too percussive for for like the the super dark Petnafini mm -hmm. mellow jazz sound. They they those picks don't really do that. Yeah. Pick yeah. jazz. Awesome so, story. I don't know, it's not much of an adjustment. I I feel very comfortable with them. But still an awesome story. I mean, that would make the perfect clickbaity title if 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 we were <laughs> doing that. Like Paul Gilbert made Martin Miller change his pick. <laughs> And and the funny thing is, you know, I got so I got so invested in searching for the right pick after that happened. It was like half a year after you gave it to me, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I got so invested, and I ordered all these picks, and I found out that the ones Paul gave me, they have more print on them, the zero point fives, mm -hmm. and they felt different than the the stock, the wedge zero point fives. All so right. Like, I think it's because of the print. <laughs> you think it didn't it, quite did, feel the same? Did it add some stiffness to it, or what was? Uh, it, it? Yeah, it added something to it. It added some stiffness to it, and I think that's why I went with the zero point six for the standard ones. That's interesting. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't one hundred percent the same. Mm. Yeah, I yeah. could totally and, see that if if the pick is very thin, that some sort of layer uh, of, of of certain paint it might just really add... change it. it yeah, he yeah, had a yeah. custom print that he drew or something. All right. And I swear to you, it wasn't it wasn't the same experience. And now I have this cabinet there in the back. It's, it's full with with picks that I'll never use now because I'm. It, this is the only one I found works from this mm. category of of Dunlop Tortex the wedge picks. This is this is the magic one. <laughs> Great, yeah. Great story. I'm I'm making yeah. a note because that's now <laughs> you and Paul. They're, so. they're, they're either, you either love them or hate them. I no, don't think no. there's anything in between. And whenever you give a, another guitarist this pick, they will laugh at you. It's kind of like, I guess it's, it's, it's kind of extreme in the same sense that an Ibanez wizard neck is extreme. Like the first mm -hmm. time you grab an Ibanez wizard neck, you're like, what the hell? And then you start playing it and you actually realize, wow, this is really cool. <laughs> Fast. <laughs> Um, exactly. That's 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 pretty cool. I mean, you must as a as a player. I mean, we know each other pretty well, but as a player, you must be so comfortable uh, with your, your technique, your musicianship, that it's kind of not a a threat for you to kind of rethink your your whole like gear setup. Like speaking of, well, you know, I'm I'm trying to make a transition to the guitar too, but kind of changing picks and maybe experimenting with string gauges. I think you you you're now using nines instead of tens, is that right? Yes, I, I went thinner with with yeah. both picks and strings. Yeah, I used to play tens my entire life, and I thought that was never going to change. And and then I, I I I wanted to as I played more rock music, I wanted wilder vibrato and bends, mm -hmm. and, or easier access to that without putting so much effort in it. And I strung my guitar up with nines, loved it, stuck with it. And, yeah, and again in in the studio. I have an MM1 that is strung up with tens and one that is strung up with nines. If I if I'm going to record something chordy or something rhythm guitar centric, I'll probably grab the one with tens because it intonates ever so slightly better. Mm. But I now have a different solution for intonating with. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's the master of the transition. <laughs> what is it? Can you show us? <laughs> yes, I can. Because that's a great guitar story. <laughs> there you Here go. go. Oh wow! Look at that, guys. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. How's how's the color called? Did they did it tell you? The color? No. No. Like some sort of salmon pink ish or. I don't know. Oh, I, I, have I would some, hate uh, that to be I salmon. I have some high res pictures, Martin. If I I can drop some high res pictures on the screen right now. Oh yeah, that would be cool. Yes. It's covering there you up at the moment. But we can still hear you. <laughs> yes. So yeah, that looks really nice. Ooh. Yeah, it's. Um, we can make some obvious jokes about the fact that the compression of the YouTube channel makes it look all wobbly on the frets, but that's not the ha. case. 
Um, <laughs> it's got an Evertune bridge. I'll let Martin do all the talk, and I'll just put these photos up, of course. And yes. then we've got some wobbly frets. Martin. Exactly. There we go. And here it is in the flesh. Awesome. Yeah, the light in this room doesn't do it justice right now, but yeah, it's a really vibrant color. It looks yeah. really awesome. Yeah. So yeah, uh, this is my my MM1 custom, Japanese custom. It's not an LA custom shop; it's a Japanese custom. And um, I've been experimenting with with the Evertune bridge for a little, for I want to say a little over half a year now. I've had the Daniel sent me the the beautiful silver RGD6 with the, with the Evertune bridge. Mm -hmm. Because I, I just wanted to try it. I just wanted to see how I get on with it. And I loved it so much that I wanted to have uh, an MM1 made with the Evertune bridge. And I thought, if I'm going to have a custom guitar, a one-off custom guitar, and I have, can have all my wishes fulfilled, then I'm going to go all in and add the true temperaments to it and make it like the ultimate studio machine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Martin, let's imagine someone has never played True Temperament or never played Evertune Bridges. Um, could you give us a sort of summary of those two main factors? Yeah. Okay. Let's start with the bridge, maybe, mm -hmm. because that is a little more common. You can you can probably find some guitars that that have an Evertune bridge on it. Um, so I, I I'm not much of a technology expert. Um, mechanical experts. So I don't know what this exactly does. What I do know is that you carve out quite a bit of wood on the guitar, but you have then have a spring for each individual string um, in the back of the guitar or with, within the bridge. It's essentially like having six tremolo bridges or six different bridges in one, in one unit. And that keeps the, the tuning perfectly stable. You, set it, you basically set it once, then you tune it up to pitch and it, it'll stay there for as long as the strings last. Or even beyond that, you can, if, you, if you change to the same gauge strings from the same brand, you can tune it back up and it'll be 99% there. And one of the coolest things about it is, for example, so this is a, is a nine gauge string, right? I can hit the low E string really hard, like ridiculously hard. Pitch doesn't change. Mm -hmm. If I were to do this, do I have a guitar with nines on here? Hang on, let's just compare this. Oh, this is actually, this has tens on it. I don't have the one with nines here right now, but if you do this on a, on a regular scale guitar with 10 gauge strings, or this is a 46 in this case, mm -hmm. takes a yep. solid three seconds for the pitch to settle in. Yeah, <laughs> boing. Yeah, and such is not the case with, and if, if those were a, a nine to 42 set, which I play on my other guitars, it would even be, Worse than that, so th that's pretty cool. At the same time, one of the biggest uh, prejudices that people have towards the Evertune bridge is that somehow you cannot bend strings, but works just fine. Here's here's a cool psychological trick that will drive people crazy. When you tune this thing into zone two, the pitch won't move anymore, and you can do the following. So Martin is kind of doing like. To full tone and double tone bends like I know. Fret, Look at that. Yeah, the fifth fret. Yeah. You're, you're doing a whole tone bend and yeah. pitches. At least. Moving. Yeah. Now I'll tune it back up so it goes into zone three where the pitch will raise. Have a listen. So I, I'm tuning right now. Nothing happens, right? Now it now it changes pitch. Yeah. So I drop it right underneath that point where it changes pitch, and I'm back in bending land. So, so right and now, the, now the pitch is ever so slightly wobbly if I hit really hard. Actually, it isn't. It's perfect. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> but, but if it were, I could tune down. I could tune it down just a smidge and have it perfect, and still be able to bend. So when that you, is the effort to bridge. This guitar talking about different zones, tune. Martin. What, what are the zones that you're talking about? Not the. Uh... Evertune, not but... sure what zone one is, but there's zone two where where the oh yeah zone one is where you where you if you put a new string on you tune the pitch up it is below your target pitch, and the string goes higher as you tune, so the pitch pitch inc increases, and then it hits your target pitch let's say in this case E. And then you have zone two where you tune and tune and tune, but the pitch doesn't change, 
And that is the, the zone where the pitch also won't move if you bend. Right. And then there's the zone three where the pitch keeps going up when you when you tune. And you want to, if you want this guitar to play like a normal guitar, you want to live right on the edge of zone two and zone three. And then it, it plays just like plays and feels just like a regular guitar. But it stay, it'll, it'll stay in tune. I literally tune this guitar once when I string it up, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And you tune it down here with an with an Elm key. Oh. Yeah. So you it, it'll take you 5, 10, 15 minutes to tune it once, and then you leave it. It'll stay in tune, period. And, and, and it's so ex you can tune it so accurately with this. It's, you can tune it to the scent. It's, it's bizarre. How accurately. <laughs> so how many, how many moves do you have to make in order to, to get the tone kind of move up and down? Is it like a very fine ratio? Oh, 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 you mean on the, with the, with the Allen key? Yeah, with the yeah, Allen key. Yeah, it's very fine. If, even right. if you were to change the tuning by half step, you have to probably make like three, three full turns. Or All something. right, so it's even finer than fine tuners on, for instance, an edge tremolo. It's ridiculously fine. The only thing is you cannot really, you kind of have to retune because as you do this, it changes where you are relatively in the zone. Uh -huh. So you cannot, you cannot just, just tune it, keep, keep uh, picking the string and tune it at the same time. You kind of have to reevaluate by getting back to mm -hmm. the edge of zone two and zone three to mm -hmm. find out whether you've put it in tune. But you get the hang of it really quickly. I'm, mm -hmm. Again, I'm not mechanically minded at all and I can, handle this bridge just fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I can do it, then anybody can. Yeah. One more question. But I think which, which would you, sorry, Dan, yeah. just for, um, no uh, so edge tremolo or Floyd Rose tremolo style or Evertune, which is more difficult or where does it sit, you know, in, in terms of difficulty? User difficulty. Yeah. I think the, the float, the floating double locking tremolos are the most difficult to use. Because stringing this up is is the quickest ever. You just you just take down the string, put a new string in, tune it up, make sure you hit you hit the edge between zone two and zone three, and you're done. It'll probably still be in tune. You probably don't even have to stretch the strings. Because <laughs> would you if you stretch them, the springs will will compensate for the change in tension. Yep. Right, I need That's I need to try cool. this. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, really I'm getting amazing. an order for an RGD sixty one ALET tomorrow from Andy. I guess <laughs> that, that, that RGD, that RGD, I, I cannot get it right now because I'm stuck to this lavalier mic. But that RGD is just brilliant. Yeah, it's really brilliant. Yeah, I still remember when we received it and we we're like, you know, we're having little experience with, with Evertune, just you know, seeing it from videos and stuff, and we we're like looking at it. All right, so how does that work? <laughs> Here's, it's, it's hard to. Yeah. It's it's a hard thing to sell to people because you need a bit of time to explain. Somebody needs to be open to the idea of having a product explained to them for about 15 minutes until they yeah. get it. Yeah. So if, if you already have a preconceived notion about what this is and it's negative, then it's, it's going to be hard to sell that. Yeah. And one of the, the, the classic prejudices is that you can't bend, for example, and somehow, yeah, yeah somehow that plagues this, this bridge, even yeah. though it's not true. And, it's, and to it's be so fair, spread. I was one of those people. I was one of those people because yeah. the only time I ever tried one was when a friend came over six years ago and he hadn't had, had it perfectly set up. And I was like, this kills my bendings. What the heck? What, this, this, this. Uh, uh. Yeah. But it was not set up perfectly. Yeah. We've got a comment from Mark in the chat saying that Devin Townsend was saying that he can take his guitar with an Evertune from minus 10 outside with snow in Canada into a hot venue and it's still in tune. Yeah. Okay, I'm... Yeah, fantastic. Kind Fantastic for recording. I spent, I spent, thanks to this guitar, I'm going to spend much more time actually playing than keeping the guitar in tune. <laughs> yeah. In fact, for, for yeah. my experience, the, my regular old boring AZ uh, is the, the best for going from temperature to temperature and it just stays in tune. Absolutely. So add that yeah. to the mix and we might have something. I, I would know. I've, I've, I've been on tour with my, with my MM1 and and I've literally in one go went from 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 cold Japan to to Thailand within a within a half a day, so like the, to the most ridiculous of humidities and temperatures, there's no issue ever, no issue ever. 
Fantastic. And I want to say one thing. Like, what, you, you could now say, well, if this bridge, bridge is so great, why don't you have it on your signature guitar? Well, the, the reason is that my number one pick will still be a guitar with a Goto tremolo. I still love my, I still love my, my tremolo systems. As almost every song I ever wrote in some way has a, has a tremolo, has some tremolo use in it. Mm -hmm. So, but what, what, whenever I do not need a tremolo, I find, find it very hard to come up with reasons why it shouldn't be an Evertune. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I wonder if Evertune could come up with a, a trem system in the Evertune, kind of because the Evertune. They've been talking about that for a while. And if, okay. if that, should that ever happen, sign me up. Yeah, yeah. But as of now, we haven't heard, they've been saying this for seven years and I haven't heard anything about it since. Yeah. I mean, you can't F with physics. It's just, you, you just got to figure out how to do it. And, uh, you know, I, th I, I really like that uh, the description from your side that you said, like each separate string kind of has its own tremolo system because that's just how it works. You know, that's why it, it makes us uh, like the floating saddles. It's just like the overall technique. It's not high tech and no, no robo tuners or anything. It's just like a very sophisticated approach of how to design a modern bridge that kind of works almost as like a monorail bridge. But with with floating saddles, kind of, yeah, and that's pretty unique, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and thanks, yeah, thanks for for educating us because uh, mm -hmm. I think part of why the Evertune system is is widely burned among guitarists is a, we are very conservative, b, we are smart as is, we already know everything, we don't want to listen to fifty minutes or even read a manual, and c, there's a lot of videos that are kind of educational out there that tell you you can't bend with an Evertune system, and that's just wrong with capital letters. So I, I've been playing the, the Silver RGD with the Evertune system on the 80s medley that I did with my band. And that's like a 27-minute one taker. Mm -hmm. And the reason I, I went for the RGD was because I could, I could be reassured that when we start the take in minute one, it's going to be as in tune in minute 27. Mm -hmm. And because I'm also singing, I literally do not have a second off to, to retune my instrument anywhere during the performance. So... Just having that extra layer of safety is really cool. And, and, <laughs> and again, you can hit the strings a little harder and, and any chord will sound, will sound really in tune. It, it just makes, makes my rhythm guitar sound, even if, if they're tracked live, they sound almost like studio produced, where you tune up to each individual part, right? Yeah. Or retune for every part, but it, it keeps this, the tuning on that level throughout the entire performance. Yeah. It's That's fantastic. Beautiful. I'm not endorsed by them or anything. I just love it. I just love the product. So, well, I got to say that was one of my favorite. I don't know. I don't know how many minutes that was. I lost time because I was truly listening. And <laughs> yeah. I don't listen very often, if I'm honest. <laughs> That's, that, again, That's a good, to, good, good virtue to have as a host. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I listen, but in small bites, and then comes a stupid joke. So, that's the first time I've been educated <laughs> in a long time. Yeah. And shall we talk about the squiggly frets? I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, the true temperament fretting system. And th this kind of is a, is a perfect marriage with the, with the Evertune bridge. Because what these smart people from, from Sweden thought of was they basically measured each and every individual note on a guitar and found the perfect location for the fret wire to be so you intonate exactly to the scent. Um, and that's why they come up like depending on string gauges and radiuses, you'll have uh, radii or whatever the plural for that is. You'll have to have slightly different shaped frets to get the perfect intonation on every fret. And that's why they, they end up looking a little funny. Um, but you'll end up with, with triads that sound more in tune than you've ever heard them on any other guitar and all across the neck. For example, if you've ever tried to, to play a major triad, a, like a second inversion major triad on a guitar with a ton of distortion, it is an ear sore, Yeah, depending on where you fret. It can be, it can be really harmful to your well-being. Uh, <laughs> but with this guitar, just, it just sits perfect. I, it's probably a little out of tune right now because I just strung up new strings, so I, I, it won't be perfect when I demonstrate it. But... But these triads just sound beautiful.
It's not like it a, sounds so damn in tune. Like a harpsichord kind of tone because because each note sounds mm -hmm. completely independent. That's a good way of putting it. And there's something interesting that happens when you put on a ton of distortion, which I can right now, unfortunately, but if you play a, a, a major third down here with the neck pickup, usually you have that friction when you play with a ton of distortion where it just, there's this interference between the overtones. And here somehow the over, I'm not a physicist or anything, but somehow the overtones line up and it creates this one consonant sound. There's none of that friction. It sounds absolutely beautiful. And again, this is another product that, that somehow is riddled with, with prejudices. Oh, you're, it's going to sound too in tune. It's not going to sound like a guitar anymore. No, it's going to sound better. <laughs> too in totally. tune. I like that. <laughs> it's going to sound better. It's like, do you, don't you want your singers to sing in tune? Don't you want your drummers to play in time? It'll sound better. And <laughs> of course, then there's the argument, but then you're out of tune with somebody else in your band. But are you really going to be more in tune with somebody else in your band if your guitar doesn't intonate well? <laughs> I think th th these are these are usually opinions brought forth by people who have never tried such system. <laughs> yeah. And it's hard to get your hands on it. And I know that you want to talk yourself into not needing it, but you need it. <laughs> you know it. When you lay in bed at night, you know you need it. <laughs> so and basically, you know you're kind of you're kind of wanting this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, if you're like a bedroom player, is that something that you definitely need? Or like on a broader scale, would that be something that the guitar community needs over time? Needing to... is such a strong word in this instance. There is something to be said about the simplicity of a normal guitar. It's, it'll sound fine. Yeah. It'll sound fine, especially for recording. Like, I don't think if you, if you were to work for a, a producer that isn't the guitar player, let's say... I've worked, like in my, in my college days, I've worked with a piano player who has perfect pitch. And the, the intonation of the guitar, it so was with an orchestra. The intonation of the guitar drove him absolutely crazy. Mm. And I, I'm pretty, pretty certain if I brought this guitar, the complaints would stop. Same thing when, you, when you're playing on a production that has a ton of synths on it. Mm. The synths, like nobody ever complains then when you, when you, when you the, the people who say it sounds it sounds out of tune with the others. They don't seem to complain when you play a normal guitar in unison with a synthesizer because that'll, that won't sound in tune. Mm -hmm. This will. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, 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 you, can, you can get by with a, with a well-set-up, well-built guitar just fine. This is for the freaks like me who want the extra 0.5% mm. perfection. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, so it, it's probably something like the magnetic backplate on the Pias that is actually pretty, pretty smart. But uh, I don't know if it would ever be like a mass production thing because it, it, it requires some sort of extra effort and maybe extra costs. So it might not like kind of get into the mass produced well, kind of yeah. world. Yeah. I mean, D Daniel, you tell me what would this guitar cost as a mass production? We were talking three and a half grand here. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I mean, because it's like your model would nowadays with, with the inflation and, and the cost of, of raw materials would definitely clock in around 2.8k. 2, 2 so you add the Evertune system, you add the, the true temperament frets that are crazily expensive. So you, yeah, you pretty much would probably be around 3.5k. Yeah. It's a lot of money. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Plus you need, you need a tech that knows how to set this up. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, we would have to educate all our guys. I mean, we have we have a couple of guys that have never touched the Evertune system, so that would that would force us to actually educate them about that new thing and how to set it up and you know how to deal with with issues because you know it can also break. You know, the strings can kind of break, and there there might be some issues with uh, because it's like a mechanical system, so it's not like it's not... or, or ima imagine the the frets being not perfectly level. And yeah, having to, to to do something to them, it'll be a nightmare because they're stainless steels. Yeah, correct. It'll be a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Is it possible um, to do a fret job on on true temperaments? I I have I can't even. It's more like it seems like an art it rather would, than a science. I said it was gonna. It would have to be a hand job. Uh, I mean, a manual. <laughs> it would have to be. A <laughs> oh, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it would. <laughs> um, we've got a question from Alexis Guitars in the chat, and that's. Can you buy ready-made necks with the true temperament frets, or do they need to be custom jobs? 
I think you need, I, I'm, I'm actually not sure about this. I, I think you need to send in your neck, uh, an unfretted neck to them. At least that's how it was. I don't know, Daniel, how it is nowadays. I think I think now they started selling necks. Like they kind of have some some OEM necks that they equip with the true temperament system. But like Martin just said, I think it started with uh, the customers having to send in their necks. Yeah, I'm just checking. I'm just checking the website. So they they are selling fretboards. They are selling necks, and you can send it in. And they I think they licensed that to a few companies like Strandberg too. I think comparison. I think, I think minus... Ivanis did, did this this fret job right. Uh, I'm not sure. Japan. Actually, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, they probably just like purchased the whole like the fretboard and then installed it. I mean, that's that's how I would. Uh, no, I think they installed. Yeah, they installed the frets. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'm actually I'm going to send this off to Sweden for a, a few tweaks. This one to 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 get the 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 setup perfect. The the guys from Trumpen offered me to do like get it get it absolutely perfect and look over the guitar one more time because again, this is not. This is not an easy thing to accomplish for any tech out there. This requires kind of special training. Yeah. yeah. So for to be honest, for for ninety nine point nine of the things you're going to do on a guitar, a regular guitar works just fine, and it has throughout history. But again, if you want to, if you want to, if you want that extra, that extra layer of of accuracy, especially for the studio nowadays, with with the kind of perfection we expect. From studio work, this this can save you a lot of can save you a lot of time and retuning to specific chords and stuff like that, mm. which you always tend to do in the studio. Is there? I, I, I'm not quite sure. Is there a limitation in terms of string uh, thickness? So if, if you're going pretty heavy, if you're like a seven string player and use like I don't know seventy fours for uh, as a low E or low I think e I think as long as you don't go to the extremes, it'll be fine. All right. Okay. Um, and if you were to go to the extremes, yeah, but you would probably have to inquire for a custom, mm. custom sure. fret layout. Mm -hmm. I, I get. I'm. I'm just literally guessing here. But the, I. W I would just recommend getting in touch with the True Temperament guys if you're interested. Because for I got it. I got it. I got to say this here on record. They've been absolutely fantastic to me because they've heard about this custom guitar was, that was being made for me, and they got in touch with me and offered their help and their advice, and and they've been nothing short of amazing. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've seen we've we've talked about that Martin previously, but without mentioning any company name, but names. But there have been other guitars already floating around with 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 that kind of uh, system, and not always uh, are they great because they have to be very precisely set up. And uh, you know, if if the neck pocket is a little bit too wide, or if you know, if there's any kind of imperfection, it will just multiply. Yeah, with that system, and that that holds true not just for the true temperament frets, also for the Evertune system. So if you have both of them, it's like the extreme difficulty, <laughs> like level ninety nine. Yep. Yeah, I probably the, the guys at the custom shop probably hated me for inquiring this. <laughs> <laughs> well, Why they can't just, we just get a telecaster? They, they just did a double neck PGM micro for Paul, so I, I'm pretty sure there have been other inquiries. <laughs> Oh wow! Well. Yeah, but well, that's the that's the the MM cast. What's it called? MM one E T T T. Yeah, but it's just something that I came up with. I think yeah. they just called it the AZ custom, but I like that kind of because it looked like met. Met, <laughs> which is another word for beer, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. What what about a color, Martin? Is it like uh, how did you come up with that particular color? It looks like a cherry pink ish kind of type. Is that something yeah. you, had, you had seen before, or it was, yeah, that was that was kind of it's, it's a variation. Like when I was picking the color for my MM1, that was the other color that I boiled it down to. So that was kind of my. This is a variation on my second choice back in the day for the first guitar. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm actually going to experiment a little. We we as you remember, we had another another color made mm -hmm. for this body that was a bit more purplish, mm -hmm. and I'm. If there were ever to be another signature guitar in the future, that might a possibility to go to go into this kind of direction. It's kind of see how it would turn out if we were mm -hmm. to go for a color like this. Yeah. So it's it's kind of an using this opportunity to experiment a little bit with yeah. possible future colors. I mean, and it would be nice to know if 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 in the chat they could they could enlighten us a little, just make a little give us your opinion. <laughs> 
What do you I think, think they both look great, especially next to each other. Yeah, they look uh, like fire very nice. complimentary. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love it. I, I kind of. I really like that. The, I don't know. The, the, the three, uh, sorry, the three dimensional part. Yeah, I, if you look at the image uh, in the picture, I think uh, in the video, it's kind of hard to see. But if you look at the image, you see that it's got like so much going on. It's a little bit uh, some some hints of of even purple, some dark red, and and some pinkish. Yeah, the light in this room doesn't do any of those guitars yeah, yeah, any yeah. justice. It's yeah, yeah. You see here in the in the close up, especially with the flame maple, I think that yeah. uh, three a dimensional uh, uh, wood is also adding to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I've enjoyed tonight so much. I, I know we've really just covered like two two things on a guitar, but I'm learning, and it's so nice to, <laughs> to sit and be educated. Um, yeah, man, I, Andy, you, you should get get the RGD. Get try out the EverTune. It's fantastic. I'll have to. I have to try an EverTune now. Um, Make a video on it. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Thanks. You, just me scratching probably... my head for for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> all right now i don't have just to send you a guitar but also pay you for a video yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <Martin. laughs> how not to set up an evertune bridge in two parts oh you can do live stream <laughs> i can yeah 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 no yeah. i'm not i'm not the guy to show you how to set it up because uh <laughs> i'm too clumsy <laughs> i know how to get it in tune yeah that's all you need that's all you need or oh, sometimes less than but uh, yeah, <laughs> Martin, what can we expect from you next? What's coming next from Martin Miller? I'm currently writing a new JTC masterclass, instructional product. I haven't I haven't released one in four years. So this is this is the comeback. Um, almost through in creating it. Then it needs to be put together and be made presentable. So I'm thinking two months from now, you're probably going to have some news. Ooh. Great. And I'm in the finishing stages of, of my of my record, my second solo album, my first vocal record. Excellent. That is almost I mean it's it's literally ninety-nine percent done. It's just tweaks here and there. Songs are written, lyrics are written, just just a few a few vocal overdubs missing, a few mixing tweaks. And but you know, I always compare this to the to the Windows loading bar. When you're at one hundred percent, it takes a really long time to Actually, <laughs> yeah. that's really true. That's so I, I'm currently nice stuck at 100. percent All right, cool. <laughs> that's a cool way to look at it. Yeah. yeah, and I also have a new a YouTube channel to maintain, so I need to be putting out regular content. Um, I'm trying to do two videos per month as of late. Um, I'm trying to deliver one performance video with my band and one educational type video. Keep a nice balance there. And I hope that in about two or three months, we can get back together with the band and shoot a new batch of videos. That'd be cool. Yeah, can you give us that, that kind of depends a little bit on the, on the whole, you know what? Yeah. Can you give us a sneak peek? Is there any particular song that you had in mind that you always wanted to do, but you haven't covered yet with, with the band? Any, like, any like style or any band or any kind of particular song that, that I, you... Yeah, I, yeah, I would like to do a Dream Theater medley, but not everybody in the band is a Dream Theater fan. All right. Well, That's fair enough. Not, and they shall remain, remain anonymous, but not everybody's a fan. <laughs> Some of us are. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, 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 it's a lot to ask somebody to learn 25 minutes of Dream Theater songs to be played in one take live yep. if they're not into it. So that's something I would want to do at one point. Oh. Can't you just do like, like I do with my kids and say, I bet you can't do it? <laughs> you, it's, it's not that you don't like it it's because you can't do it you're not capable I, I, i'll try that you know maybe it works <laughs> you know, you've educated me and it's, it's my turn Apology. to educate you <laughs> <laughs> but why, why don't we ask the chat what do they want us to play next absolutely that would be interesting, that would be interesting yeah, give us guys. some suggestions guys both for individual songs but also for medleys yeah that would be interesting you want to just i gotta say Sorry, Dan, for the people that haven't seen your channel, in case there are any, what have you done so far so they don't request the same stuff? So we know you've done the 80s medley, Stonking, well done. We, we have like, I think we have by now 60 videos. Yeah. So a lot, a lot. Tons. We've, we've done, for, as far as medleys go, we, in, in order, we've done Pink Floyd, Toto, D 
Deep Purple, Queen, Genesis, Police, and 80s medley. Yeah. And as, as guests, we had in order Tom Quayle, Andy Timmons, uh, Josh Smith, Paul Gilbert, Mark Lettieri, and Kirk Fletcher. That was the order of guests. Yeah, great guess. Let's yeah. see what the future holds. Yeah. I, 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 we almost had we had some we had some pretty nice names lined up to be on our show before the whole you know what happened with the world. Yeah. So that that kind of puts a, a dent into plans a little bit, unfortunately, occasionally. So. On the other hand, the channel is doing pretty well, and I think I oh. think it gives you a lot of opportunity for like what's coming after everything is kind of being resolved, and yes. the world is kind of freed from that whole pandemic. So, yeah, and also it it gives it gives me a nice platform to release my own music on. Yeah, uh, that's fantastic. I'm very grateful for that. I, I I enjoy putting stuff out there, quite honestly, because it's it's received so well. Mm -hmm. And it started out with the whole project started out completely innocently. Not with, without any expectations attached to it, other than yeah, I would probably get a thousand views on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And maybe for for our guests in the in the podcast as well as in the live stream, um, I think your album from the other end from 2013, if I'm not mistaken, is also available as a full album stream on YouTube. Yes, so it's on my channel if, as well. Yeah. yeah. So if anyone is interested checking out, there are some great tunes on there, like an end in itself and fresh ducks. I mean, these are some some like modern classics i would almost call them <laughs> there, you see I mean, so many people covering them it's, it's so funny because I, I i find it so hard to identify myself with that album these days because what i do now is so very different it's almost to the point where i want i, I i'm thinking of releasing it under a different name <laughs> okay I mean, it's, it's so different yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's so different is that something where you, where you think might, might, some people might be like even put off because it's not like what they would usually expect? Because nowadays it's like you're just serving a, a certain niche and a certain type of audience and you're kind of broadening your audience with that kind of vocal album. I think, yeah, I think if you, if you see our covers first, hmm. you might be a little bit confused by my album. And I think if you, if, if, if you, if you were to listen to the second album, should it be out, uh, this transition will be much smoother because you know I, for me th this whole covering thing um, a lot of people will, will always tell me, why are you covering music There's no point yeah for me it's a learning experience I'm, I'm playing all this fantastic music and I, I also mix it and therefore I, I, I sink into every part of the music and I, I learn I, I get inspired by it and I learn so much from it yeah. oh this nice chord and we are the champions I should nick that for one of my own tunes Etc. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and you don't ask Pavarotti what original content are you seeing? I mean, it's just like <laughs> you just interpret some songs, and I think there were some some like like gems of of music, like the the Sultans of Swing uh, uh, video was amazing because it put a completely new perspective to the song. Um, you had like with Andy Timmons, you did Electric Gypsy a little bit faster with some fancy like back and forth stuff. I mean, I think it, it adds some, some perspective to it. And especially if you have an artist there that is playing his original material in that new context, I think it's also adding a new dimension to what they have done so far. And uh, yeah. well, I think one of the coolest things we've done is, is enjoy the silence in the 80s medley. Yeah. <laughs> because that, the, the, the sound aesthetic of that is, is a little, you can tell it's age a little bit. Because it was at the time done with, with it was a state of the art kind of sound, mm -hmm. but now we've now we're playing it with quote unquote real instruments. Mm -hmm. So instead of a drum machine, you have you have a drummer playing instead of a bass a bass loop, you have a bass player playing, and mm -hmm. I think this, this that, that put a, a really new fresh spin on the song. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that getting that give, giving that song a little makeover. <laughs> yeah, it breathes more. It's more organic. But I mean, still, I mean, Felix is still a drum machine. <laughs> yeah, it's bizarre. His time feel is just off the hook, off yeah. the hook. And I never I swear, I never quantize any of his playing. There's, I have not, I have not moved a single note around. Wow. Okay. Ever. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't even know that these are one takes. I mean, or not one takes, but like you just like you have one take that you you know don't cut here and there. It's, and you do like I think four, four or five takes usually. We do five uh, for the medleys. We do five takes. Yeah. Finished, uh, start to finish. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So... And uh, I think the the only time we didn't do that was during the Genesis medley. Mm -hmm. 
because there we had we had to have the a, a grand piano piece play in the middle of it and we didn't have enough mic channels to do it okay. so we had to stop mic the mic the grand piano record it and then go back to the other other stuff. <laughs> okay so that was the only time we couldn't we just didn't have the the technology to pull it off uh -huh. yeah was well, some cool. great content there I, I think just i think just read that uh who was it uh Krena just said, Sultans of Swing with Josh is fantastic. I listen to it every day when I go to oh, work. That's I mean, so nice, that's, man. I, I'm glad you're enjoying. Thanks, for, thanks so much, dude. Great compliment. We did have some yeah. suggestions for, oh, some requests, I would say. Uh, Mikhail has requested a Motley Crew medley. <laughs> nice. All right. <laughs> I'd, love to, I'd love to hear that. And then K. McKinley has requested a Super Tramp for Variety. We, we're, we're getting a lot of super tramp requests. I'm, I'm just not going to do it because they are notorious YouTube blockers. Oh, wow. Okay. Right. Yep. Oh, that's a shame. Ask Rick Beato. <laughs> <laughs> well, that has become a meme already, right? <laughs> yeah, man. I w so far, knock on wood, we didn't have a single video struck. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. That's great. Yeah. But we're also not monetizing. So I'm assuming the fact that we're not trying to even trying to make money of it puts a lot of the people who scour the internet for covers mm. puts them a little bit at ease. Yeah, yeah. I think so. You can't. Uh... But that's also a reason why people should support the project if they like the music, because uh, you know you're paying all that stuff from your own pocket. And uh... well, not anymore. It used to be like that that I yeah, paid yeah. entirely out of my own pocket, and now we yeah. have, thanks to Patreon, we have crowdfunding. Yeah. Yeah. However, we haven't reached the point where it covers 100% of our costs, so I'm still paying up. Mm -hmm. and, I, and me and the band are still not making, we're, we're still not being paid for our work. Mm -hmm. So even if I were to cover all the expenses, the hundreds of hours in, or thousands of hours by now in post, they, they would be unpaid, which, is, which to me is fine because I love doing it. But mm -hmm. yeah, we're, we haven't reached the point where it's a completely self-sustaining project. It, mm -hmm. it needs a little bit of nudging here and there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully well, we'll get there. How can people support you, Martin? What's the, the Patreon link? It's patreon.com slash Martin Miller Guitar. Uh, I'll put it in the chat if you don't mind. Sure. Absolutely, sure. go for it, sir. There's a 10% 10 10 fee, but um, you're, you're fine with it. <laughs> Uh, Dan, What's the affiliate Martin, link? While, while Martin's doing that, Dan, we have reached our 90 minutes just over. So I'm going to be a stickler mm -hmm. for, for timing tonight. And I, I want to say, Martin, I had fun, but also I had more than fun. I had a, a sitting down enjoyment of being spoken to, which is, is rare for me. <laughs> um, thank you. It's, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for bringing me on the show and letting me uh talk non-stop that was very therapeutic for me too so <laughs> <laughs> good i think it's not just us but all the others in the chat too they uh they really appreciated you taking the time and taking us on that uh, kind of tour into the world of true temperament freds and Evertune bridges yeah and uh your perception uh of you know what makes great great tone what makes a great instrument and also why you should sometimes rethink what gear you use i mean you know changing from pick sizes and changing you know uh, the setup is something that you rarely see for a musician that is already kind of well established in, in you know with all that said this is still the desert island yeah <laughs> of course and it's a lovely one mm1 trans aqua blue and also we have the mm7 by popular demand for 20 yes 21 that's and, a seven interesting string. look at the difference in colors yeah Oh, yeah. Is that the right the, the one in your left hand? Is that greeny or is that no? Like that's first... number one. Number that's number one. Okay, that's yeah. The Both one. number one and number two are turned out a little green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is how most guitars in the wild will look like. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe to end the show, we we can tell the the cool story about you picking a another MM one. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that was the day I drove down to you. Yeah, at, yeah. At Minel distributions and i almost lost my driver's license in doing so oh so speeding <laughs> <laughs> and i have seven late. points and eight points in germany means your license will be gone for a significant amount of time yeah so that was close yeah yeah um and yeah and we we ended up you, you had i think you had five mm1s in stock and i needed a backup 
Yeah, yeah. So I drove yeah. down there and we, we tried them all out and I couldn't really decide. So we went on Instagram Live and I played all five guitars blindfolded. <laughs> and I picked, I picked the one guitar twice blindly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we classic. narrowed it down. I think in the first step, we narrowed it down to your top three. And then we did it again and you you know identified the your your primary pick again and that was that was pretty impressive to and see the cool that. thing is that the, the 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 one that played best was also the one with the most vibrant flamboyant flame top oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh. yeah that was oh, man so i wish we could we could do this in real life and have a beer now but yeah well yeah ultimately i think we'll get to a point where we can do that so yeah let's keep fingers crossed it Absolutely. The world will get back to normal. At We've some had point. requests for part two already, so that's really nice. And um, there's some some gen genuine love coming for you, Martin, in the chat. And I'm sure people listening Thanks, to this, Thanks lots of people me. listen while they're working. So if you're working right now, um, in the future, of course, not right now live. But if you're working, listening, focus. You know, don't cut anything off your bodies or or drive somewhere you shouldn't. <laughs> but uh, I was listening to your podcast while I was while I was getting moved into this new place. Oh, that you. helped a lot. Great. <laughs> Your soothing voices tickling my ear. <laughs> okay, I have one final question for you, Martin, and that is, what is yes. HelloFresh delivering tomorrow? Uh, they deliver every Monday. Oh. So they deliver, they deliver me five meals uh, on, on Monday. And today we had um, pasta with cutbella, mm. Ikea style. Cutbella, All right. Like meat meatballs, kind of. Yeah, but but not but, but without tasting like a shoe, but like an actual meal. <laughs> Great. And what's and what's tomorrow? tomorrow? I yeah. think there might be a teriyaki burger in store for us. <laughs> oh, Ooh, stop that it. sounds amazing! Amazing. Yeah. So, guys, tomorrow, if you are if you are having dinner, think about Martin. You know, enjoying his teriyaki chicken, and then grabbing one of his uh, nice. No, no, it's, it's a it's a teriyaki a, a, a burger. A, Beef burger with teriyaki sauce. Ah, all right, all right. Beef teriyaki beef, even better. Yes, wow. and with wedges. <laughs> it's gonna be killing. It's gonna be absolutely killing. Now, now he's flexing. You know, yeah, with wedges. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, yeah, again. My, my my kebab consumption has dropped significantly. <laughs> oh boy! You oh, know, no. during those difficult times, you're not supporting your local kebab store. Come on. <laughs> I know, but actually, I've. <laughs> I guess this is me growing older, but I find unless kebabs are absolutely freaking amazing, I find mm -hmm. them find them pretty gross these days. Yeah, actually, um, I think yeah. the more you mature, the more you <laughs> Andy wants to quit. But the more you mature, I think the more you don't want just to be like fed. You just want to like enjoy the food. I you just absolutely. you know, and it's just, that doesn't just that, that doesn't just extend to food. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of basic things in life that you enjoy a lot more when you get older that mean nothing to you when you're young, such as going oh. to the bathroom. <laughs> or sleeping in when you get kids. Oh, stop it. Once you have guys, kids, guys, so... stop it. You're, just, you're killing me now. <laughs> I just imagined sitting or, or just standing in the toilet with the door locked. That's heaven. Right? Just standing there. <laughs> Thank you. And then just sort of flushing the toilet just to make it like and then washing my hands and oh, i'm coming back now heaven yeah. <laughs> fantastic i do love my kids I, i've talked to them a few times i do love them very much um so martina <laughs> has confirmed that that's the meal you're getting tomorrow which i think means we can sign off all t's are crossed and i's are dotted dan do you want to ask people to give us a five-star review of course, because that will help us to be more visible on iTunes or on Spotify. You know, grab your girlfriend's cell phone or your coworker's cell phone and give us a five star rating. Um, send us uh, DMs on Instagram if you have any particular questions. I think Martin can also answer them afterwards. I mean, we can, you know, exchange messages. If you got any questions about his guitar, um, check out his YouTube channel and uh, take a listen to. Uh, his, his 2013 album, The Other End, which is amazing. And of course, um, yeah, be well, be nice to each other, take care, and uh, talk to you and Andy next week again. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks, Martin. Bye bye, bye everybody. Thank no. you. Bye bye.
Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything guitar.